It's the 24th of March and we're going to the Belgian uh, army base in Leopoldsburg. Uh, it's open for public and there are uh, World War II reenactors over there. So uh, I'm going, because I live nearby, I'm going again with my uh, motorcycle and uh, it's the first time for me so we'll see what's going to see over there. I hope you enjoy the video. After a 10 minute drive, I arrive at the entrance of the barrack in Leopoldsburg. Within 30 minutes, at 10 o'clock, the gates open to the public. And as you can see, there's already a long line of visitors waiting. Because I had already registered on the spot yesterday afternoon, I can drive into the barracks without any problems. Yeah. I'm on my way to the German World War II display area, marked here on the map in the old timer and reenactor zone, where I meet my fellow German reenactors of the group 277 Volksgrenadier Division, die Flakhelferinnen, Kampfgruppe Kochenhausen and die Gespenster Brigade. I will now show you around the entire reenactment site and start with the German World War II displays.
Here on the left, reenactor group East to West 4045 built the Russian World War II display. Several American World War II vehicles are parked in the background. And now it's time to meet our friends from reenactment group Belgian Army and United Kingdom with their impressive and beautiful display. Hello. Bonjour. Bonjour, mon grand. You got beer? Oui, 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 merci. Mau. Mm. Tu veux ta gamelle d'eau? One of their friends even brought this Bedford MWD light duty truck with him, which featured in the well known war movie Dunkirk. And here we see a nice World War II US display, which have been put into some work. This is a Grizzly 1 cruiser tank from 1943, a variant of the Sherman tank that was built under license in Canada in 1943. And here we see an M63 Jackson, an American tank destroyer from the Second World War. With the advent of heavy German tanks, such as the Panther and the Tiger, the standard American tank destroyer, the M10 Wolverine, was no longer sufficient. The M36 Jackson first saw action in Europe in mid-1944. And here we see the display of reenactment group Valentine, 307th Counterintelligence Service Company. The latest represent the CIC and the gentlemen the US military police. Here on the left, a US GMC VCK W353 toolset truck of Kilroy. <laughs> now we arrive at the first World War corner and start with the small German World War I display. And this impressive first World War display is from, hopefully I'm not mistaken, reenactment group the Patrouilleurs. And here, reenactors have set up the World War II English displays. Now I'm going to show you the exhibitions and vehicles that are part of the motorized brigade. One of the pillars of the land component. The motorized pillar is the heaviest capacity of the land component, both in terms of staff, number of units and in terms of resources. The motorized brigade consists of a headquarters with a pillar in Leopoldsburg and in Marchand van Men and commands 16 units. And here on the left is the stand of the 10th Group CIS from Leopoldsburg, which provides the general CIS support, communication and information systems to the headquarters of the motorized brigade and to the units of the Leopoldsburg region.
The artillery battalion provides fire support to the combat units with a 105mm howitzer and 120mm mortar systems. And here we are at the 18th Logistics Battalion in Leopoldsburg. No action can last without the necessary logistical support. The Logistics Battalions are responsible for the support in all its aspects. Not only the supply of food and drink, fuels, ammunition, spare parts for vehicles, clothing and equipment, but also the maintenance and repair of vehicles are part of their tasks. No action without intelligence. This vehicle, the Pandur, is a 6x6 armored personal carrier. The battalion E-Star is responsible for tactical reconnaissance and intelligence gathering with which the missions of the other units can be supported. Your eyes and ears on the battlefield. And this is the Raven. It's an unmanned reconnaissance system. Here on the right we see the stand of the battalion Carabiniers Grenadiers with on the right the Dingo. A heavily armored vehicle based on a Unimog chassis with a V-hull design. And on the left a new Jeep, the Oshkosh CLV, the cream of the American crop, but with Belgian weapons. The infantry is an important part of the land component of the Ministry of Defense and consists of trained soldiers who operate not only from combat vehicles, but also on foot. They are equipped with advanced weapons and modern equipment to carry out their task effectively. And here we arrive at the Battalion Liberation Pipeline. And here on the right, at the soldiers, we'll see a spike, a medium and long range portable anti tank missile system with a range of 200 till 4000 meters. It can be used against people and heavily armored targets such as battle tanks. This impressive vehicle is the M109 Howitzer, a medium 155 artillery gun developed in the United States and commissioned by the US Army in 1963. And of course I also have to pay a visit to the 23 Medical Battalion, which was officially established in January 2022. The medical units 2 EMI from Leopoldsburg and 3 EMI from Marsh of Amen merged and now form the 23rd Medical Battalion. Because of my second World War reenactment portrayal as a sanitator, a medic, I was very kindly addressed and received here, which pleased me after a rude collision with an elderly soldier earlier that morning at the information stand. This medical battalion works with some more impressive materials than I am used to in my World War II reenactment. And here we see a Medic Dingo, a heavily armored vehicle based on a Unimog chassis, now converted to some kind of ambulance. And this is a Medic Piranha, a light armored 6x6 vehicle that is converted to transport wounded and injured soldiers. And here on the other side we see the stand of the military police. The military police is responsible for maintaining discipline, order and security within the armed forces. Among other things, they conduct investigations, enforce military laws and regulations, and provide support to military personnel and their families. Now we arrive at the stand of the 11th Engineer Battalion, 
The engineer battalions mainly work in support of the brigades and have a whole range of missions. For all these assignments, the engineers have a wide range of tools at their disposal. In the distance where the arch can be seen is the entrance of the event. The recruitment and information stands are located on both sides in the street. Now we can see both the Grizzly 1 cruiser tank from 1943 and the M36 Jackson driving around the terrain. This event is definitely worth a visit, even if it's with the least military interest. I'm not a military expert, but I hope you like the video. Now it's time to drive back home in my sidecar. Bis nächste Mal. Tschüss. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and hit the bell button.